Hey everyone, two main news stories this week, but first of all a quick sports update after Novan Djokovic was barred from entering Australia due to not complying with her COVID vaccination policy. In the process, he became the first tennis player to be knocked out of a major tournament for just missing one shot. He subsequently challenged the decision in court but lost a case and has now been banned from Australia for three years, which is pretty ironic because most of the Australian government officials are only there themselves because one of their ancestors lost a court case. Anyway, the first big news story this week was that whilst the UK was locked down last spring, the Prime Minister was really putting the party into the Conservative Party and hosted a big booze up in his back garden. This was all, of course, at a time when many members of the public had visits from the police for having their guests over, and the Beastie Boys famously had to fight for their right to party. There were, of course, denials and they claimed it was a work event, not a party, and Boris wasn't handing out drinks. And that's true, but only due to the technicality that it was BYOB, and stories have since subsequently emerged about a booze run to the co-op on the Strand. As of yet, it's unclear if they got value for money for the taxpayer by purchasing the wine as part of the dinner plus wine meal deal. Another part of the story we're still waiting on is whether we'll eventually get to see the CCTV footage of a staffer dashing along Whitehall with half a dozen bags clinking away. The Prime Minister in response to all of this refused to resign and he still claims it was a work thing and he wasn't aware that it was a party. And I actually kind of almost found myself agreeing with Keir Starmer for the first time ever when he described Boris's ignorance excuses being so lazy as to be offensive. Although of course in true Labour Party style he later turned out to be a complete hypocrite after pictures emerged of him too having beers with friends around the same time last year. There was someone else in the news though this week with stories about losing their job and that person was the Grand Old Duke of York, also known as Randy Andy, also known as Prince Charles's idiot brother, also soon to be known as possibly whatever that big long number is on the piece of card he's asked to hold up when they take his picture. Earlier this week he was stripped of all his titles by the Queen, including HRH, but also dozens of other things like Colonel of the Grenadier Guards, Commodore and Chief of the Fleet Air Arm and Royal Colonel of the Royal Regiment of Scotland. Wowzers, the last time I saw someone lose that many titles they were managing Tottenham Hotspur. Anyway, having gone from Royal Highness to Royal Minus, I suppose all we can do now is sit back and wait for the court case to eventually start later in the year. Presumably the lesson here is that if you really insist on hanging around with the likes of Jeffrey Epstein and committing crimes and the like, at least have the common sense to do it in Australia before not getting vaccinated and then blaming your absence on pen pushers at the airport. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, please subscribe.